The college football playoff format for next season has been updated on today's episode of the show. We're explaining what changed and how it still benefits the Louisville Cardinals next season. That said, stay tuned. You are Locked On Louisville, your daily podcast on the Louisville Cardinals. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, what's going on, everyone? Welcome into another episode of the Lockdown Global Podcast. I'm your host, Dalton Pence. Today's episode brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, use the code Locked On for twenty dollars off of your first purchase. Joining us for his weekly appearance, blessing the show with his presence, State of Football analyst uh, or State of Louisville football State analyst, football. I should say, Grant Mulligan. G Money, what's going on, man? A little under the weather today. A little, a little under the weather. I apologize to the fans. Decreasing quality of my voice. Normally silky smooth. Pleasing to the ear. Perhaps a little less so today. I apologize. As if Grant's ego gets any larger, um, there is something that we'll talk about at the conclusion of the show that Grant has been hinting at, but it, it found the airwaves of social media on Tuesday. We'll also talk, uh, we'll begin to talk about uh, the college football playoff format. It changed. We'll explain what changed while also explaining what will still benefits, maybe even a little bit more now. And then like we mentioned how we would do every episode with Grant moving forward, there will be a buy sell game hypothetical where we will both introduce two buy sell um, hypotheticals and have the other either buy it or sell it. So beginning in the college football realm, Grant, not really much going on at this time as we wait for spring practice, but it was announced on Tuesday that the NCAA will be going with the five, seven approach, meaning that instead of six conference champions getting in, they sort of looked at the landscape and said, you know what? Five's enough. We're going to go with seven at large. That will be determined by the committee. Overall thoughts on this, and I know it's not much, but does it help Louisville at all, in your opinion? It's kind of what we expected, and we did touch on this on the last episode as well. I like the format. I think conference championships should be automatic bid to the playoff, just like uh, and, and many other of the collegiate formats and their major tournaments. Uh, I think that winning your conference should guarantee you a spot to compete for the national title. Uh, under any circumstance. So I, I really like that that was the direction we went. I think it helps us um, multifaceted. Uh, I think it it makes it a lot more likely in, in both regards, both in the at-large bid and with the conference championship bid. Uh, as we know, Louisville last year, 10 wins, we were in the conference championship, and arguably we should have won. But lackluster offensive performance uh, mm -hmm. led, to the, led to the contrary. But – with the ACC still looking to be as open as it has been, um, and though we don't have as favorable of a schedule this year, I still see uh, a pathway in which Louisville is able to make another run at the ACC title. But even if not, let's say the I – I think that – I think Louisville has to either win the conference championship or win at least 11 games to make it just because of the strength of the ACC. But – it's a lot easier to get in than, than the previous four. I mean, you know, with there being three times as many slots, that would make sense. But with the ACC being so within Louisville's grasp at this time, uh, I think that is probably the most beneficial to Louisville's entrance to the playoff. Uh, but the at-large bids, of course, are going to be something at play as well. Like I, I we said this, we talked about this in the last episode. I see us for this upcoming season. We talk about this in buy sell. I see us as like an, an 11 seed at large bid. So that I'm still sticking with that after sleeping on it. Um, but that that's what I see at this at this current moment. But I think multifaceted it helps us a lot. I agree there. I ultimately think that you can make the argument that decreasing one of the conference championship automatic bids. It helps Louisville, I think, by default because the ACC is obviously included in the five and you take away one, so it sort of gives more of an opportunity to maybe a group of five team that's maybe on the outside looking in, but it also allows for another at-large, and I think that that is definitely a key 
that we have to focus on is because you never know what the deciding factors are. I, I don't really like that the committee is still deciding between the remainder of the schools, but it is what it is. I think you have to at the end of the day, maybe, but because if you go with the AP poll, who knows? Although I'm honestly fine going with the AP poll, it is what it is. If I were to tell you that Louisville makes the playoffs next year, would you first assume it was because of winning the ACC championship or filling in in the at-large or potentially both? I would think my my gut reaction, if I just heard that, like in the future sense, I would think my, my mind would immediately say we got an at-large spot, personal opinion. Like I, like I just stated, I see us as an 11 seed at-large bid. Mm-hmm. That's that's where my mind would go to immediately. But I would not, if you said it's because we won the ACC, not shocked at all. We were just in the tournament, or we were just in the ACC championship game. I was we, just say, we're, we were not just in the tournament. We ain't been in the NCAA basketball tournament since 2019. I'm talking about basketball, man. I'm talking we're about, about basketball. to. We're about to. Okay, different. Very different. Very different. Anyways, um, we were just in the ACC title game, so I wouldn't be shocked either way, but my – my gut reaction tells me at large bid, um, but with given the given the wide open nature of the ACC and who we'll face this year, I see no reason as to as to why we couldn't get there um, through the traditional conference champion route. I don't disagree there. Um, do you? Do you like – I know you said you like that the conference champions get to get to the um, college ball playoff. A lot of people don't, however, because of – they think it sort of like the, the BCS Bowls back in the day when teams weren't necessarily the greatest, but they made these top bowls because they won the conference. What do you say sort of in a rebuttal to that? to those that claim, hey, it's maybe not necessarily the best teams. We should do away with conference champions and just focus on the 12 best teams. I think winning the division or or winning your conference has to mean something or else the game is never going to be taken seriously. It can can mean something, but it might not necessarily automatically qualify you towards being in the playoff. I disagree. I disagree. I think it I I think it should. I don't think that it should guarantee you to be, let's say, let's look at the seeding system. Maybe it doesn't make you one of the top five seeds just by nature of being a conference champion. But I think if you win your like the personal opinion, I think if you win your conference, then you should be granted a bid to the NCAA ter- or to the NCAA tournament. This isn't like in basketball where you can just have a Cinderella run to make the conference championship because you, you, you just won the games in the conference tournament. This is a head to head is a singular head to head matchup where you both had to earn your spot there and the ACC's chance. You had to be one of the best two teams in the ACC to make it. Um, so in, in football, it's not, there's not as much of a Cinderella aspect to it. In my opinion, like if you got to the conference championship in football, it's, really earned so i think like i'm i'm a fan like i said i'm just playing out take out all the extras i'm a fan of the conference championship get you automatic bid but more so in football it's it's harder to win a conference championship in football than it is in most other sports just because of what it takes to get to the game that's in no way to be disrespectful to any other sport but you have two teams in a conference championship versus a conference tournament which could be won by even like the 13 seed in your conference. So I think with football being laid out the way it is and conference championships being laid out the way that they are, I don't see any reason why it that doesn't qualify you as one of the elite teams. I will also add this might not necessarily play much of a factor if you don't think conference champions should be allowed, but it is the five highest ranked conference champion. So maybe it, it does take out a little bit of that, um, you know, lack of competitiveness. Although you win your conference, I agree with you. I I'm fine with conference champions. And I just saw it all out all throughout Twitter on Tuesday that people weren't really a fan of that. But regardless, I, I think that the small change 
even if slightly, still does benefit Louisville in the long run. So it's the segment you've all been waiting for. Last week, we introduced it, the buy-sell game. It was four questions I asked Grant. We're going to split it up, and we're both going to ask each other questions. We'll do that. I'll let Grant get into the mental headspace to ask me some great questions here momentarily after we talk about our friends over at Game Time, the title sponsor of the show. Game Time is the fast and easy way to buy tickets for all the sports, music, comedy, and theater events near you. Right now, all users get $100 off when they buy a big game ticket with Vegas 100 being the code. With last-minute deals, all-in prices, views from your seat, and their best price guarantee, Game Time takes the guesswork out of buying tickets. It's, it's the only ticketing app that gives you complete peace of mind with your purchase. I've used Game Time about six times over the past couple months, and each experience has been a pleasant one. There hasn't been any headaches with ticket delivery or anything. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time right now. All Game Time users get $100 off a big game ticket with the code Vegas100. Terms apply. Just download the Game Time app and, and use the code Vegas100 for $100 off a big game ticket. Or if you're not going to the game, use the code Locked On for $20 off your first purchase. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. On every episode I have a Grant Mulligan moving forward, we're going to have the buy-sell game. If you weren't uh, paying attention to his last episode in which we introduced this hypothetical, shout-out to Locked On Chargers for the inspiration. Buy-sell game is essentially I'm going to ask a question, Grant's going to ask a question, or actually probably make a statement, I should say. And if I believe it, I'm going to buy into that statement. But if I don't, I'm going to sell. So I have two, Grant has two, Grant, first question I have, or first statement I, I have, got to st stop saying question. Louisville will have three players with over 500 rushing yards this season. That sucks because that was, that was a tie-in of one of my second questions. I'm going to buy into that. So I'm gonna I'm gonna nix my question. It's a good thing I had four written down just in case this. That's that's the beauty thing. of it. Grant and yeah. I don't know the questions beforehand, so it's completely <laughs> off the dome. Yeah. So my variant of this was Louisville doesn't have a thousand yard rusher, but they have three over six hundred. I think. Well, obviously you're gonna buy into this then. I'm gonna buy, it, yeah, because I was already in the headspace. Who are the three? Is it the normal three you but would the, think of? I. I think we go just looking at the depth chart. I think we're more committee this year than we were even last year. We had the two headed agree. running attack with uh you know with Maurice of course subbing in and sure. and offering some extra juice here and there. But I think we're gonna have a legitimate three headed running back attack where it's not gonna be as much uh one A, one B, and then two, or I guess it would be one A, one B, and then three. Um, I think it'll it'll be really one A, one B, one C, and it's going to be a, a consistent rotation with, uh, with of course Penny Boone leading the charge. Um, then after that, then maybe Don Cheney, and then we'll see That's what happens. Right. Yeah, All right, Grant. For the first time, you get to make your first buy sell statement. Okay, first buy, buy or sell. Colin Lacey leads the ACC in receiving. Dude. Oh, man. Okay. You got to throw a fireball to start it out. Um, give me one second. I've got to do one reference check real quick. I'm going to see what the yards were looking like last year because I know that Malik Washington led. Yeah, he was Malik Washington. Had the, had the oh, time man. Um, man, I'm going to buy it. I, I really am because you look at reference last year. I mean, no, there is no Malik Washington this year. Xavier Restrepo was the closest one. Now you have Cam Ward, who's going to be more of a dual threat there. Jamari Thrash was fourth with 858 yards, and he dealt with some injuries. I think that hot take, Lacey is better than Thrash, and that's um, pretty scorching hot in my opinion because Jamari that's, was That's a, a beast. scorcher, man. But I, I think that that's a testament to how good I think Lacey is. I think I'm going to buy this because – even though it's balanced, I think he's going to be the true wide receiver one. I think that there's going to be a focal point to get him the football. And if Jamari Thrash isn't hurt, I think he's going to be contending for that number one spot. So, and I think ultimately you will possibly get better quarterback play. So, I'm going to sell this. It's my own question, but I'm selling it. 
I think he's going to finish. I could, top see, I could also see how you could sell because that's a tough thing to say. It's going to be a balanced attack for Louisville. So, um, I, I mean, I, I think it's going to be is what it is. But that that sort of questioning is what leads me to my second one. Penny Boone will have over 10 rushing touchdowns, at least 10 rushing touchdowns. It's really – oh, I'm going to buy it because I think he – is fantastic for goal line work. I think he's yeah. he's a ready made goal line back and like a Gus Edwards type mold where he has that physicality where I don't see another back in the room right now who you would rather have from one through four yards out. So I think he'll be a low tens, but I think it's very I think it's very possible just because you get into that into that area mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. Maybe, you know, this year you get some more mobility, maybe you get some more option run. But I really yeah. think that Penny Boone pushes the pile better than even Grendo did last year. You know, don't, no disrespect to either of the guys we had, but uh, per, Penny Boone is more power than what we've had in, in a lot of recent times. So mm -hmm. I think he could he could definitely be a one-yard cloud of dust pile pusher who cashes in a lot of those one- to three-yard guys. <laughs> It makes sense. Uh, I, I think you know Boone is actually what ten pounds heavier than Isaac Garendo, and Garendo is no small man. So I, I would agree here. I'm buying this as well because I think that uh, Garendo had eleven touchdowns last year, and Jawar Jordan got the majority of the work. Louisville ran the ball a ton in the red zone. I think that it's going to be the same thing or the same case this year. Okay, final question of buy sell. This is the final question, right? We're, we just have four total? Yep. But even? Okay. We're going to have a tight end as one of the top three receiving producers of the year in terms of, I guess, in terms of yardage. Hmm, I'm going to say one. You're going to have one guy emerge. You can pick one. But um, So you're saying that I mean, assuming that Lacey and Brooks are going to be in that top three as well, you are stating that a tight end will surpass Chris Bell, surpass Antonio Meeks, Jimmy Callaway, Jaden Thompson. That's that. That's a tough one. Um, personally, I think that that candidate would probably be Mark Redman. It would make sense here, although you could maybe make the case for Isaiah Cummings depending on what his – um, you know, what, what it's going to look like for him. But going back to the stats of last year, and don't get me wrong, Louisville wasn't necessarily the greatest passing attack, but they weren't slouches either. Third on the team was 362 yards. Chris Bell was second with 407. Now, I know that you have a better offense this season. Oh, man. It's between Redman or Bell for me at, at number three. I am going to say I'm going to buy. Because Mark Redman, I emergent. think it, Mark Redman is one of the going to be one of the best tight ends in the ACC, truthfully, in my opinion. He's been on the watch list the past couple of years. Chris Bell is going to have a good season. I think, but he's going to be fighting with a bunch of other options. I think Mark Redman is TE1. He's going to get the majority of the work. So it, by opportunities, you would nod to Redman. And I think even with the focal point of the offense, Brahm has made it clear that he wants to involve the tight ends more. Play action is going to be more of a thing. Mark Redman, I think, is going to be probably number three behind Lacey and Brooks. Uh, and I wouldn't think he'd be anything above that, but – like, well, I, yeah, yeah, I, I know, Redman. but I mean, yeah, that, that would make sense that you put Redman at three. But that was those are some good statements, some very thought provoking statements. I like that I had to make Grant pivot from two of questions that he had already planned. But one thing I won't do is take away his shine. He has been talking about the TBT for the past couple of weeks, and we secretly we statistic or statistically strategically plan this episode to release right around when the uh, news was breaking out and Montrez Harrell on this year's team. We'll let Grant talk about it 
um, here coming up on the next segment after we talk about our friends over at FanDuel. Get buckets with your first bet on FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook, because right now new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $150 if your bet wins. Bet on all your favorite NBA players and teams with the quick bets, live same game parlays, exclusive props, and more. Just visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and shoot your shot. FanDuel is the official sportsbook partner of the NBA. Final segment of the show with Grant Mulligan, State of Louisville football analyst and key contributor into making the Ville TBT what it is. For those that don't know, TBT, the basketball tournament, is a single elimination 64 team tournament that if you win, a million dollars is the grand prize. Last year was Louisville's first team that they got into featuring um, some Louisville stars, some local guys, and Unfortunately, they lost after choking a big league or big lead, I should say. Pain. Pain. Grant, we're back. Year two. Better than ever. Better than ever. So if you if you weren't tuned in today, the announcement came 9 a.m. It was great. I've been looking forward to this one for a while. It actually got pushed back once. It was supposed to be announced prior. So that's why in previous episodes, I've been like, big announcement. Hopefully by next ap- next pod. And then it didn't happen. And then so last plot, I was like, next time, it's next time. TBT's back in the Ville for a second year in a row. I want to see card fans showing up and showing out. Top 10 attendance record year one. Let's see what we can do year two. You've already got Peyton Siva at this point, Montrez Harrell at this point. Montrez is huge. It's a huge get for this team. I was thrilled to find out he was coming. Uh, I, I'd been wondering. I've actually been talking to a few guys on the lead up, like, oh, he's a free agent right now. He could be. So best believe we at the Expo Center are going to be tightening those rims up because it's going to be some high-flying rim-rattling action, and you better not miss out because it's going to be it's gonna be the show this summer. TBT year two, back and better than ever. Great I'm really, 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 really excited to have this Grant back. gives me, like, standing out in front of a dealership, Bob's just – Pitching his product. That's not a bad thing. Don't take that as a bad thing. I just think it's, it's a way sleazy. to. No, uh, dude, you're, not. you're just a solid ambassador for what you rep, whether it be your upcoming um, media company that you were repping last week. Uh, high vi- Was it High Vibes? High Vibes. Yeah, man. You high see us on Instagram. Out. You made a reel of us, man. We I made did. It. I did. And I commented and didn't get a follow or a like back from but, High Vibes. Yeah. It oh, that's funny, it is, man. It is because I'm is. the guy. It's because they rock with me, man. It is what it is, man. I, I won't promote them ever again. It's okay. Um, not crazy, playing. but crazy. I think that this city is starving for fun basketball, right? Oh, we and, got fun basketball, man. And we saw last year, and seeing it's like the Avengers coming out of the portal at the end of Endgame. It's like all of them coming back, and it's just like makes you just want to salute and just stand there. Um. Trez is big. That that's a huge get. Are there any other? I, I know Peyton's back. Are you thinking that we're gonna get you know guys like Russ back? Oh, you can't even say it. Can't even. I can't even say it. I can't even say it. Can you nod at the screen and like? I'm not gonna nod at the screen, man. I'm not gonna that's nod at the screen because that like totally messed up the question I was gonna ask and who you wanted to see on this team. Uh, that's can not. You me, can you tell me who you want to see on this team? Yeah, I'll tell you. I'll tell you who I want to see. Blink I'll really fast if, he's, if that guy's playing, huh? Blink really fast if that guy's playing. When you I'm talk. not, I got. I got to be strategic about this. Guys, who I want to see play: Grant Mulligan, certified buzzkill. Donovan Mitchell. <laughs> All right, guy. Yeah. I had to go that. That's direction. been another episode of Locked On Louisville. Y'all have a good one. You're in the episode. Of that. Might as well. You're not gonna get. Might how are you gonna well. come onto this episode okay. and hint at it and not? I'll, I'll throw some, okay, okay, okay. I'll, th- I'll throw some out there. And this is this is. I legitimately. I promise. I do not know. The people who I'm about to. Li- these are people who I do not know. People I would like to see. Grant just like winked for those that are listening. Huh? Grant just winked for those that are listening. I did not. <laughs> Okay, Carly Jones would be one I would love to see again. Yeah. Let's see. Uh, I see a lot of fans talk about Ryan McMahon. I think that would be cool. I want to see Ray Spalding. Ray Spalding would be cool. Is he not on G League right now? 
I thought he was. I G-D. don't know. Is he not still uh, with Dallas? Keep if they talking. With I'll, I'll find out. Good. Keep talking. I'll find and out. I can't. Um, yes, he is. He plays for. I mean, he literally plays for my NBA team's G League squad. So if he's he on the plays, G League, I don't think he can play. He plays for the Vipers. That's literally on my Rockets G League team. Never mind. Keep going. Might cut the list there. Because I gave I gave four. You I said Carleek. You said McMahon. Who else? The disrespect yeah. to Mahmoud. I know. That's a. That's Can you hell. believe that Mahmoud hasn't played in like six seasons? That's wild to me. Oh, man. That makes me feel old. Yeah, that really makes me feel old. old. What about but, Anawaku? Is Anawaku still in the G League? He was on the team last. He was on the TBT last year, man. That's I, it's been like a year, and I've forgotten like half the stuff I've forgotten in a year. But I almost wonder if there's going to be or how many like non Louisville stars are going to be on this team as well because they had some key players last season. That I think Louisville. we're going to have more. This is okay. This is pure speculation. This is a hundred percent pure speculation. I think it's going to be fewer. I think it's going to be fewer. Bro uh, started out. I think it's going to be more. No, I, I changed the phrasing. I was going to say it's going to be more Louisville heavy, like University okay, of Louisville heavy. So what right. I was about to say, but then I I decided to rephrase it. So either way, so you got both sides of it. I think it's going to be. Sense. I think it's going to be more U of L heavy. What Shane Behanen? I, I hope he comes back. He was a beast. Yeah, he, he was. I think there's definitely. Um, I'm looking up this player's name because I don't know. If, like a lot of these guys, I don't know if they're like. If okay, so if they're not playing G League, if they're not playing basketball in America, can they still play? Yeah, because I mean, Carrot came from overseas last year. I want to see Trey Lewis on this team. Okay. I think Trey Lewis would be a solid addition to the squad. We need some help in the front court, though. I feel like Gorgie, bro. Oh, he is available, isn't he now? Oh, he's just, he that's it. That is it. Bring Trez Gorgie. Oh my gosh, dude. That'd be Don't crazy. not give me start. Just bring back the whole starting five of 2013 and we're winning it. Mark it down. Fun. February 21st on this fine Wednesday edition of the Lockdown Global Podcast. The Louisville TBT team will win, Dalton Pence says, if they bring back the 2013. Yeah, they might win anyways. I'm going to be honest about it. They might win anyway. Don't ruin my shine. Don't ruin I'm my right. shine. Let me make my prediction. There you go. <laughs> no. <laughs> That's pretty much. Um, it's great news. I'm glad to see Louisville back in this TBT. I'm really glad to see Grant be able to finally talk about it yeah. to the masses as I'm he's thrilled. literally held on to this news for like the past two months. So it's nice to see that. But um, I've had this one in the pocket for a minute. I'm very thrilled about it. Dates. Yeah. Let me cover that before we're out of here. Okay. July is a week earlier. Not a week early, but it's – few days earlier this year than it was last year. We're on the earlier week. Last year, we were on the second week. July 20th, 22nd, and 24th is what we're locked in for right now. Now, when tickets drop, I better see each and every one of you on that app, on Ticketmaster, buying that. I need to see a sellout within the first 15 minutes or else I'm canceling the event. Okay. <laughs> I can't do that. You're done. For, for legal reasons. You're done. I'm done. <laughs> You're done. It's over. He said, uh, I, uh, this is Dalton Pence. This has been the, this has been the Lockdown Global Podcast. Thank you all for tuning in. It's great to be back, as always. Thrilled that TVT's back. Thrilled to be on Lockdown Louisville. I would say that this is Grant's, like, flu game episode, but it feels like 95% of Grant's episodes, he's sick or battling Wrong. some type of uh... – Dude, I've been sick twice on a Lockdown Louisville episode. Two times, mm-hmm. ever. Twice. That's yeah. That's going to be the next buy-sell next week. Grant Mulligan will be sick for the next week's episode. Okay, man. I've only, I've been on – I've been sick two times. Two times. Mm-hmm. I'll have I'm to go back and watch. I, I think the – uh, the historians of the Locked On Global podcast that the I keep fans. on retainer need to uh, need to check into that because I'm not sure. Real fans true. in the comments, real Grant Mulligan fans in the comments, let me know how many sick episodes I've done. Is that a tumbleweed? Yeah, <laughs> people, you know, people tune in to, to listen to G Money talk. It's a known, it's a known phenomenon. But anyways. I'll do the honors. That is going to wrap up today's episode of the Locked On Global Podcast. Everyone have a great day. Go Cards. We'll see you right back here.